1958 Jefferson Nickel. Chances are good you may have a Jefferson Nickel in your pocket right now. These five-cent pieces have been an important part of U.S. coinage for decades. The U.S. Mint began producing the Jefferson Nickel in 1938 when it replaced the Buffalo Nickel. While most people would likely think that a nickel is not collectible, some Jefferson Nickels can be quite valuable depending on year, type, and condition. For a serious coin collector to jump through the necessary hoops to obtain a Jefferson nickel, the coin will likely have to be in almost perfect condition. These coins are more beautiful than distressed coins and can be far more valuable. Grading the 1958 Jefferson nickel. When looking at coins that have been around for decades, you have to take a close look at the coin's condition. While some of these coins may be valuable even if in poor condition, Collectors typically only desire coins that are in pristine condition. Finding coins that have stood the test of time and look great can be quite difficult, however. When you are looking at a coin's condition, what you are really in effect doing is trying to decide how that coin might be graded. You can see the guidelines below to get a good estimate of what a Jefferson nickel might be worth based on its condition and grade. Uncirculated. Collectors most often try to get their hands on coins in this condition. These coins have never been circulated or used for exchange, and because of this, their mint state condition may have been well preserved over the years. Looking at the coin's physical appearance, you will likely assume that the coin was freshly minted and has not been around for decades. Extremely fine. Coins assigned this grade will have some very minor flaws. Nevertheless, they may still be sought after by collectors. With this grade, any flaws on the coin are very insignificant, and may only be noticed during a very close inspection. Fine. Coins that are assigned this grade have been used in exchange over the years and will have some visible signs of age and wear. That being said, any damage to the coin does not affect the integrity of the coin's images or details. Good. The majority of Jefferson nickels on the market today would fall into this category. These coins have seen heavy use over many years. They may have significant scratches, dents, or even discoloration. For a coin collector, these coins are considered the bottom of the barrel and will often be passed on in favor of coins in better condition. Pricing, the 1958 Jefferson Nickel. When trying to determine an accurate price range for a coin, there are two key considerations. The first is the coin type. For example, in 1958, there were two types of Jefferson Nickel minted. In addition to the coin type, you must also get an accurate assessment on the coin's physical condition. Use the chart below to get an idea of what you might expect to shell out for a 1958 Jefferson nickel based on the coin type and condition. Hello everyone, it's fantastic to be back with another Roseworth Dimes episode. The reverse side of these coins, which are 1977 Philadelphia examples with heavily braided dollar zero. 10 pieces shows the weekly strike date making them nowhere near eligible for full bands categorization. Please use the subscribe and build buttons located below this video to join our channel if you haven't already. The 1977 Roseworth Time is a typical coin with a large mintage, just like the majority of Roseworth Times, since the United States Mint produced over 796 million dimes in 1977, they are comparatively common and simple to locate. The 1977 Roosevelt dime is regarded as the scarcest coin in terms of availability. It doesn't have any distinctive qualities that are particularly rare or that will have a big impact on its either worth or collectability. Specific variations or minting mistakes, however, might occasionally raise the value's popularity among collectors. 1977 Roosevelt dime circulation is often worse than their face worth of $0.10. Coins that are in uncirculated condition and still have their original brilliance may be worth a little more to collectors. However, the value is still somewhat low unless it is in outstanding condition or shows a unique variant or defect. Two specimens with no finer make up the service's 67 FB population. At the Great Collections Auction in April 2023, one of the most priceless specimens of the problem was negotiated. These well-toned specimens in at least 67% condition with full bands sell for $14,106 with buyer's premium. I appreciate you guys watching. Keep watching our videos on YouTube and don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons. In this video, I'll discuss 1975 Philadelphia Mint Jefferson Nichols and reveal the values of these coins. 
thus in excellent immaculate condition. As can be seen, Sheldon Ski has this Jefferson Nichols encircled in exceptional shape. Since there is no mint mark beneath the date, Philadelphia Mint produced it. The Denver branch of certain beef has impressed those with D mint mark. Surfaces of cold nickel gray are mildly abraded, although they still retain some nickel gray mint shine in certain places. Make sure to click the subscribe and build buttons located below the reverse side display sharp strike, but not sharp enough to acquire full steps classification if you haven't already done so. If the graded one cello steps are completely flat on a few steps lower, I appeal is generally good. Therefore, the 1975 Jefferson Nichols is not regarded as valuable or scarred. In actuality, it is a very typical coin that has been produced in vast quantities since the 1975. The Jefferson Nichols coin does not have any scars, and its worth is mostly determined by how well it has been used in circulation, where it exhibits indicators that its value has typically been around or around its five-cent face value. The 1975 might, however, have a marginally higher worth to collectors if you find it in commerce and it is still in excellent condition. The 1975 nickels only have some value in higher mean states with full river steps. Take this scent as an illustration by PCGs greater than the typical state 67 plus. One of the finest full steps 1975 nickels known to PCGs, it is exquisitely toned in pastel iridescent hues. The surfaces have been expertly kept and have been entirely struck. At Stax Powers, sold in 2021 for $45,160. Discover the hidden treasures within the world of coin collecting, where history and value converge. Today, we embark on a journey to uncover the secrets of the 1950 nickel. Its scarcity and unique mint varieties make it a true gem for collectors of all ages located anywhere in the world. Whether you're a seasoned veteran or just beginning your numismatic adventure, this fascinating piece of history holds something for everyone. By understanding the importance of variety and condition, you can unlock the true worth of your very own 1950 nickel. So join us in exploring the world of vintage nickels and immerse yourself in the captivating realm of coin collecting. Your 1950 nickel is an elusive find. It is a favorite year with collectors and an exciting addition to their collections. With a built-in allure because of the date, the next and important step is recognizing the quality of your coin. Values rise on a scale along with the state of preservation. Subtle points are judged and grade is determined in step two. Compare your coin to the grading images to narrow its range on the value chart. Popular variety of 1950, Jefferson Nickel. To recognize 1950 is one of the very interesting dates in the entire Jefferson Nickel series. It has intrigued collectors for decades. Soon after release of the 1950s nickels, it was realized by collectors as a low production year for coinage. San Francisco did not strike any nickels alerting collectors to watch numbers struck from Philadelphia and Denver. As it turned out, both mints struck below average numbers for the year. Correctly identify your 1950 nickel variety. Both are needed. Complete a set of vintage nickels. 1950D Jefferson nickel D mint mark on reverse. Denver mint struck the coin. A 1950 Denver nickel has the distinction of the lowest mintage of the entire Jefferson nickel series. 2,630,030 nickels released to circulation is a very low number of coins and collectors highly prized the variety. These are also one of the few dates and mints of the series with a premium value in circulated condition. Denver placed a D mint mark on coinage to identify the mint. The small letter is on the reverse to the right of Monticello next to the rim. An important variety to identify, Philadelphia, the main mint normally struck tens to hundreds of millions of nickels per year. 1950 is an exception with numbers minted just over 9.8 million, turning out as the eight lowest of the Jefferson nickel series. Low numbers of coins struck is an indication to collectors of a potential scarce variety. Today, premiums have developed for examples in lightly circulated condition, in the 1950s, Philadelphia did not use a mint mark to identify its coinage. Look on the reverse of the coin. The absence of a mark in the area to the right of Monticello confirms the Philadelphia mint variety. 1950 nickels are a premium value coin in grades from mint state through the lower circulated grade of good. 
Grading qualifies the amount of wear when compared to standards. The different grades are listed on value charts to narrow how much the coin is worth. 